Welcome to Hot News, everybody. Hope you had a great Tuesday yesterday. In yesterday's video, I said, hope you had a great Monday. Wait, no, that made sense. Oh, I see. I was confused. I said, hope you had a great Monday because I was talking about the past. It wasn't Monday. Or did I say it was Monday? I need to watch yesterday's Hot News. Give me a second, everybody. Yeah, I was right. I was talking in past tense. Since it was Tuesday, I hope you had a great Monday. I make sense. Sponsor spot, UFD deals. If you guys want to save money on computer parts around the entire internets, we got them all in one location. You only have to go to one website, ufd.deals. Check it out. We've got graphics cards, we've got monitors, we've got storage, everything on the homepage, best deals. If you want to find specific deals, you click on the little tabs and there you go. You've got the best deal on an RX 590, which you wouldn't want to buy because the 1660 Ti makes a whole lot more sense. Anyways, if you want that, check it out at the link in the video description. UFD deals, affiliate codes, links. We make money, you save money, win-win. Now let's win with some PlayStation 5 news. Yeah. And when I say news, half of it's news. And the first half is a bunch of rumors and speculations and leaks. So let's talk about that. So apparently there was a forum post by an individual who was known to have leaked the exact specifications of the Wii U back in the day. I know, real high profile guy here, especially on the best console ever made. Anyways, past, uh, past achievements aside, he has provided some specs with regards, or she has provided some specs with regards to the PlayStation 5's development kit so that we can know what's happening on the, the thing and we're gonna see what's going on. So let's read the specs right here. We've got a CPU of an eight core 16 thread Zen 2 CPU with a 3.2 gigahertz boost clock. That is considerably faster than the current Jaguar stuff that's going on. Then the GPU, a fully Navi-based GPU with some of AMD's next generation architecture features at 12.6 to 14.2 teraflops. GPU clock still undecided. Then as far as memory, there's 24 gigabytes in total, 20 gigabytes of GDDR6 at 880 gigabits per second, and then four gigabytes of GDDR4, or, or not GDDR4, four gigabytes of DDR4, which is for the actual operating system, and then a two terabyte hard drive on top of that. You know, you think if they're gonna give us a Ryzen CPU with the Navi GPU, that could at least give us an SSD. Prices have come down substantially. What is this crap? So I did my best to find the original forum post as opposed to this Twitter thread that I was uh, linked to by one of our viewers. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to find it, but uh, the, it was quoted in a few different places. I have a lot of speculation about this speculation, my friends. I'm not entirely sure I believe everything that's going on here. The eight core 16 thread Zen 2 CPU, I'm actually totally okay with that. 3.2 gigahertz boost clock doesn't sound like it's out of the realm of possibility considering what we've seen out of Epic with their seven nanometer performances. I'm not doubting the CPU. That Okay, the GPU, 12.6 to 14.2 teraflops, is a 2080 Ti. A 2080 Ti has 13 teraflops of performance. That's insane. That's not happening. That's like, I could believe that Navi would come out with a GPU that does that. I don't believe that we're getting it in a console that they're saying is going to be $499. Zero chance. I'm calling hogwash on that. Maybe that's because it's part of the development kit and they did give them a higher end Navi GPU to actually do all of this stuff with and what we're gonna get is more realistically around a 2060, 2070 level of performance. That would be okay, but 13 teraflops, bull crap. I'm not believing this for a second. The reason I bring it, bring it up is because one of the leakers supposed uh, history with the Wii U specs and then two, it's been been sent to me. I've seen it around the internet on several places. You guys might have stumbled across it, but uh, yeah, that, that sounds super fishy. I wouldn't believe it at this point. PS5 equaling a 2080 Ti for $500. Like AMD would be like singing from the rooftops right now and they would have flexed a lot harder about Navi at CES if this is what they have in the development kits of the PlayStation 5, which we're anticipating it should be launched sometime towards the end of this year, middle of next year. If the development kits are already out there, then that means so or AMD has something to brag about, which they, they didn't. So, hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm torn on this one. I'm leaning more towards bullcrap. I hope you guys are too, because you're, you're smart thinking individuals. But let's think about uh, this actual new thing that uh, Sony actually 
actually actually put a patent on, which is a deep learning utilization to uh, get personalized data about the game player and put that into the video game itself. So it's gonna use neural networks to learn how people play video games and then try to scale the experience to that person, whether that be dynamic difficulties, different types of uh, AI that come at you and try to exploit your weaknesses. It looks like it might be baked in at the hardware level of the play or firmware level of the PlayStation 5, which means that games could get a lot more dynamic and people who play certain games actually get a different experience than their friends because they're more incompetent. Incompetent. I was gonna say incontinent. I am both of those things. And then just a little bit more AMD news. AMD's bringing back the XT. Yes, my friends, in case you don't remember the XT, it was a moniker put on AMD G or ATI GPUs back in the day. We got things like the 2900 XT and all of that good stuff, but they dropped it. They dropped it a while ago. Well, now they're bringing it back with the RX 560 XT which is gonna be better than an RX 560, but worse than an RX 570. We totally need this AMD. Thank you so much for not bringing out Navi yet. We really appreciate the XT. What does it stand for? Extreme Turing, extreme terse appointment. My last graphics card that I ever bought was an XT. That's how long you've been out of the PC Master Race race? X1600 XT or something like that. Wow, you're old. You know what else is old? Windows 7. But that doesn't mean it's dead. Even though Microsoft has talked about not supporting it upcoming in the future, they finally got DirectX 12. It just got DirectX 12 in thanks to World of Warcraft and the patch that's coming out for that. Windows 7 now has DX12. So my friends, if you're tired of the spyware, if you're tired of the force updates, go back to Windows 7 and you can play the latest games. It's not gonna be a big deal, yeah, yeah. Speaking of latest games that are actually old games, Halo, the Master Chief Collection is gonna be available on PC. And you would think, ah, oh, Microsoft games gonna be on the stupid Microsoft store and the answer is yes, but it's also gonna be on Steam So that's exciting. I didn't expect them to do that at all. Like that's that's a great move I'm, I'm happy with that. I never played Halo fully, so I don't care about the game, but uh And I don't, also don't care about a game Reese wants me to talk about but I'm not gonna talk about it Something about Borderlands 3 But I don't care Mainly just despite Reese <laughs> He's looking sad at me Somebody said that I should stop like self-referencing and that we should start just giving random facts about South Africa. So give me one, Reese. Give me a random fact about South Africa. It's South. There you go, South Africa fact of the day. Now let's talk about Microsoft again. This is a Microsoft segment right now, in case you haven't figured that out. They are issuing the update to the update that gave you worse gaming performance. So if you updated to that update and haven't rolled back the update that bricked your gaming performance, update to the new update, and that should fix all of your gaming issues, supposedly. So do that, because uh, otherwise you're still gonna have choppy frames and whatnot. But good, good job on Microsoft for actually fixing it so quickly. It was like in two days, so. This wouldn't have even needed to happen if you actually retained your quality testers. Just saying. And then last Microsoft news. They talked about how they're gonna implement phone screen mirroring into Windows 10. So whatever is debuting on your phone, you just connect it to Windows 10 and then it appears right there on the sidebar or wherever you want it, you can position it around. That has finally rolled out in a beta form to the latest Windows 10 Insider Preview and it should be coming out to Windows 10, the actual version sometime soon. So look forward to that. That's kind of cool. You know what else was kind of cool? The Red Hydrogen 1 when it was announced. But then it was, uh, you know, not kind of cool when it actually got released because it was pathetic and the camera was garbage and everybody was just like, this is $1,200? What the heck's going on? They better support it with all of those modules. Hey, guess what? They're not. <laughs> Who would have thought a massive flop of an expensive phone doesn't have enough R&D budget to continue producing the add-on modules that it was supposed to have? I wonder if I've heard this story before. Oh, wait, I have. When was the last one that did it? Either Motorola with their stupid thing with the clip-on stuff or with the, Lenovo, or the, the LG G5, because it was like the G5 and friends. Like, it's cool. It's great but it's not a sustainable business model. This hasn't worked for anybody, ever. Yeah, so they dropped the camera module that was supposed to be on it, that, that was supposed to be like the upcoming release for it. They pulled that down from the website. There are no references to it anymore. So uh, yeah, super disappointing. I expected better of RED. Although with all the issues that I hear that people have with RED cameras, meh, kinda. We'll stick with our A7 III for now, thank you. 
And then in case you use PayPal and you'd like to transfer money from PayPal to your bank, they're gonna be trying out instant bank transfers, not trying out, they're implementing instant bank transfers to banks in the US. You'll have to take a small performance, performance fee? A small fee to, the, to help the process go along a little bit faster as opposed to the wait that you usually have to do. I'm gonna keep my money. I don't need my cash usually that quickly, so I'll be all right. And then Netflix, they uh, they said that Bandersnatch, the Black Mirror episode, which was like a choose your own adventure thing, was a success. So they're talking about actually bringing more interactive stories to Netflix, even something that could be a romantic comedy. Mm, you get to choose the bow that you go home with. Why did I use the word bow? Don't know. I'm old school, man. <laughs> Save me. You know what's not old school? The Drone Racing League. It's coming to NBC and Twitter on August 11th. You're welcome. Why is this a thing? I get that drone racing is a thing. Why does it have to be televised? And then Firefox, they just got end-to-end -end encrypted file sharing through the browser itself. You can send up to a gigabyte file, no questions asked, directly to somebody else who's also using Firefox. So that's pretty cool. Private file transfers, super encrypted through arguably what is still the people's web browser. And then it won't devour your 64 gigabytes of RAM, presumably. Toyota's going to space. That's all I need for that one. And then Uber, their self-driving car program has apparently been burning through $20 million a month. This is recently released as they're trying to prepare for their initial public offering of the stock. $20 million a month to get their self-driving fleet up and ready, and then it kills somebody. <laughs> wow. Jeez, Uber, you gotta like to spend that cash flow, huh? I mean, obviously I don't own something that could be equated to a billion dollar business, so I don't know how to spend cash like that, but uh, presumably one day I will. And you know what one day I will too? Bad segue. A man was arrested for threatening Google because uh, his YouTube account was terminated and he was peeved off. So he stormed on over to the Mountain View, California branch of Google all the way from Waterville, Maine to confront the staff and be like, my YouTube account has been deleted. Gosh dang it, Google, why are you censoring me? And they were like, we didn't do that. Turns out his wife did. Get wrecked, homie. It seems like he has uh, a little bit more uh, issues going on than uh, just the domestic ones at this point because he's been arrested for confronting the staff and yeah, kind of bad. Her reasoning for deleting his account and not telling him was uh, because she didn't want him losing his in front of my kids. Well, apparently he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder after he was convicted in the 2002 death of his friend in an intoxicated driving incident that uh, landed him a five-year prison sentence. Wow. And then he was also involved in a slow speed police pursuit on an interstate. So a lot of, lot of difficulties there. I can sympathize with somebody who, had, who has bipolar because I grew up in a family where one of my family members had it. So I understand. This was supposed to be the fun headline of the day. Turns out it got a little bit more serious. Anyways, I'm gonna end hot news there on the weirdest note possible. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Check out UFD Deals if you're looking to save money on tech products around the internet. Would be good for you, your wallet, and our bank account because we make a little bit of money out on every transaction you do. Anyways, get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too. Hot news, hot news. Just for everybody who wants me to do that. Bye.